welcome back everyone, it's me again, Matt, really appreciate you being on today's video. We're talking about anti-aircraft weapons platforms and we are touching in the realm of the Russian military. It's been a little while actually since I've talked about Russian military equipment, but it is one of the most interesting topics that I like to focus on my channel because I really do think that when the Russians produce military equipment, they don't do things by halves. And this particular video is talking about something that really does not do things by halves in general when it comes to anti-aircraft defense. 57mm guns are unusually quite uncommon in the military world because it's quite a large caliber and you wouldn't normally expect it to be placed in upon a anti-aircraft role. But with the, you know, added value of drones that are on the battlefield today, it's becoming more and more challenging to engage these drones that are at higher altitudes than some of the more, you know, common drones that you see in an infantry-based deployment role, such as little handheld drones, things like that. But the Russians are really siding towards the realm of bigger guns when it comes to tackling anti-aircraft capability. 57mm is a beefy round to be launching into the sky. Today, folks, we are talking about the 2S38 Derevitsia, which is basically the Russians' new anti-aircraft system based on the chassis of the BMP-3 vehicle and is equipped with the beautiful 57mm gun. And I have to say, when I'm looking at this platform, it's a little confusing because I know the number of anti-aircraft platforms that the Russians own and the kind of capabilities that they have. And this just seems like another added but bigger gun in configuration to anti-aircraft. But... There are some hidden features that this vehicle is a little skeptical in showing you and that you can't really see unless you do a little bit more digging and research. Now something that I haven't touched too much on my channel with weapon systems is multi-programmable or basically smart munitions that can engage in-flight air targets similar to that of flak but are programmed and they are smart munitions. I mean that's exactly what this gun is designed for. And it's a little bit different to what we're used to seeing from the Russians with just almost dummy ammunition with programmable fuses, yes, but it's still quite standard in the way in which they engage aircraft. With programmable ammunition, you have the capability of not only engaging aircraft, but ground targets too. Now, the 2S38 was officially unveiled at Army 2018 International Arms Show and rolled through Moscow's Red Square for the first time during the Victory Parade on June 24th, 2020 and it was quite formidable in its presence people asking a lot of questions as to what is its purpose and what is it doing on a bmp3 chassis as an infantry fighting vehicle but before we get any further this video is brought to you by ridge wallet they were kind enough to allow me to sponsor their fantastic product and to be honest with you i have been looking for a new wallet overall anyway it's sleek and industrial and doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket or get in the way similar to that of a I guess, leather wallet that I would have when I'm serving with the army in my Canadian Armed Forces career because sometimes you do need to take your wallet into the field and big bulky leather ones are just a pain in the butt. With something like this, it's nicely protected and completely changes my whole pocket situation when trying to use things in the field. It is designed to fit easily into your pocket and most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, carrying around all receipts, gift cards, hotel keys and just a complete unorganized mess. Why have we moved from large flip cell phones to the iPhone etc but still use the same old school leather wallet? Some of the things I genuinely like about this particular system to collect my cards and wallet items is that it holds up to 12 cards plus room for some cash, which if I need to use in the field, there it is. There's over 30 different colors and stars that you can choose from, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. I chose the more tactical green. I really love it, but really don't take my word for it. I mean, there's about 30,000 five-star reviews on this product. I don't endorse things that I don't believe in. As I said, I do need something that's useful for me in the field. The durable materials really do mean each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty, so you can buy this one wallet and carry it around for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you will like it that let you actually test drive it for 45 days and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't like it. Also, for those of you who are really into your security, this does have RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers, which in the day of today, we do have that risk for sure. You can get 10% off today with the free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash walletsimus. That's ridge.com forward slash walletsimus and use the code walletsimus in the link in the description box below. So let's get back to talking about this rather interesting little anti-aircraft vehicle. 
Now, the self-propelled vehicle is a surface-to-air artillery system mounted on the chassis of the BMP-3 infantry fighter vehicle, and like the T-14R Marta tank and T-15 capability, the crew sits inside the armoured hull and operates a unmanned turret remotely, which is where the Russians are really pushing for crew survivability and capability, and for something like this makes complete sense. You know, if it's not going up head-to-head -head against tanks, it's probably going up against helicopters or other, you know, lightly armoured vehicles that could ambush it at any one time. The vehicle is outfitted with a combat module with the 57mm automatic gun, which is capable of firing 120 rounds per minute, but it can carry just 148 rounds, and even with its smarter munitions, it's likely that the anti-aircraft weapon system could go and deplete its ammunition supply very quickly, even just with shorter bursts. The platform is primarily designated to fight drones, cruise missiles and aircraft weapons with a close-in zone, but the anti-aircraft artillery weapon platform is also capable of striking ground targets. But it begs the question why, when the Terminator exists, an absolutely formidable, furious and deadly ground attack platform. The Terminator, which I have done a video on myself, is a fantastic example of what can happen when you put big guns and lots of missiles on top of a standard vehicle chassis and annihilate ground forces from distance. Which begs the question, why is it that the 2S38 is even considered being put into somewhat of a ground capability? You would think if they're designing an anti-aircraft platform that they would purely design it to be fully structured around knocking out aircraft, but they haven't. They've still kept the capability of this gun platform with that 57mm gun firing at ground targets, which you would expect that if this vehicle was going into battle, it would probably be supported by the T-14, Armada, T-72s, T-90s, T-80s, and of course the Terminator to engage, you know, soft skin vehicles, tons of infantry or whatever else using those massive cannons to just annihilate ground forces. Which is why it's a little weird that we see this vehicle being put into the could be potentially a ground attack vehicle as well. Now, trials of the ammunition with the multi-functional projectiles are supposed to be completed of this year. And the press office in Russia are saying that they're doing a lot of good things with it. And I would agree, you know, programmable information into rounds to engage aircraft is a game changer. A very big game changer. But it isn't clear entirely what the smart munitions can do, but precision guided missions have much higher rate of success and hence increased lethality. And in recent years, the United States military has tested various smart artillery rounds, such as the 155mm bonus shell developed by BAE Systems and Bofors and Francis Nexter. Primarily, the vehicle was designed as a concept technology demonstrator. It could be a possible replacement for the 2S6 Tunguska air defense gun missile system that was adopted back in the early 1980s. By 2020 of this year, a couple of the units of the new system were completely finished. Now, the 2S38 combat vehicle was designed to operate as part of a larger defense network that includes various support vehicles. Such an arrangement of this vehicle with the weapons platform is quite unusual for a vehicle of this class. The 2S38 can engage targets traveling at a maximum speed of 1,800 km an hour. It's also effective up to ground vehicles and infantry hold it up in buildings and fortifications up to 2.5 km away. Its 57mm ammunition is more lethal than that of the 30mm rounds of the 2S6 Tunguska or the 23mm rounds of the aging ZSU 2340 Shilka. The vehicle also does have a 7.62mm machine gun. This weapon is externally mounted and provides a little bit of fire support when engaging small infantry vehicles, potentially softkins vehicles, infantry and some low flying helicopters. This air defense system does have passive detection and tracking systems. It uses thermal sights rather than radar to detect and track targets. It can detect an A-10 Thunderbolt II ground attack aircraft at ranges up to 6,400 or 12,300 meters, depending on its detection mode. Small UAVs such as the IAI BirdEye 400 are detected at ranges of 700 to 4,900 meters. Hull and turrets of this particular platform are made of welded aluminium armor. The front arc is a composite armor and provides protection against 30mm armored piercing rounds, which is pretty capable considering that this vehicle does have an unmanned turret and 30mm would defeat things such as the current ongoing warrior right now, the Bushmaster 25mm, and just about everything NATO currently has to offer in terms of a standalone armored package. You have to remember that if this thing is actually going into combat, it's probably going to get up armored anyway, and with a standalone protection of 30mm, that's pretty good. All round protection is against 14.5mm armor piercing rounds, which is fairly standard for us, you know, NATO vehicles as well. 
protection can be enhanced with the add-on explosive reactive armor kit. There's a lot of discussion out there if Shatora or other, you know, active protection systems can be placed upon this vehicle, but with the limited real estate on that unmanned turret, and with the capability of this primarily being an anti-aircraft vehicle, it's unlikely we will see a lot of active protection systems on this vehicle. It is, however, absolutely dosed with smoke grenade launchers in case it does get bumped across some low-flying aircraft or helicopter. Of course, the technology out there today see through smoke is completely negating the fact of it being used, however, it's still useful if it does need to pull out of the area with infantry coming as well. Furthermore, it can generate smoke screens by injecting fuel onto the exhaust, which is a pretty common standard practice for tanks of this today. This air defense vehicle is operated by a crew of three, including commander, gunner and driver. It seems that the vehicle also has the ability to carry dismounts, as there is an entry and exit door at the rear with hatches, which is basically, as I said before, a weird dynamic for this kind of vehicle, because it is really a BMP-3 turned into an artillery platform. It's just some weird niche. But the technology it has inside of it is pretty up to date. I mean, the, the, the systems they're using, the fire control systems, are pretty intensive. You know, we've got uh, very powerful high definition TV system that's able to actually engage targets from distance and see quite clear, accurate information of what they're hitting. For ground targets, this is great. For air targets, even better, especially moving at high speeds. Now, the vehicle does have accommodation for the dismounts, but primarily it is going to be used for the air defense role. This is mainly for the fact that it's going to be very, very cramped with the rear mounted engine. The 2S38 is powered by a UTD 29 V10 diesel engine developing 500 horsepower, which is pretty darn impressive. And I can safely say, if I was able to get inside of this thing, it would fly. I mean, 500 horsepower for a vehicle of this size, that's pretty darn good. And, you know, although it's got that 30 millimeter defensive capability, most of that armor is probably going to be pushed to the front in that capsule. And the rest covering the 14.5 millimeter spectrum is going to reduce the weight of this vehicle quite significantly. The engine being mounted at the rear is better for weight distribution and improved amphibious capabilities. Yes, as always, the Russians have gone all out and made these things able to swim. As the original BMP-3 actually started its life as a light tank, but was later repurposed as the infantry fighting vehicle. There is a manual transmission with four forward and two reverse gears, which personally I think is crazy still having manual transmissions on these vehicles. But the vehicle also has hydropneumatic suspension, which is very, very key for something that's going to be charging across the battlefield to try and catch up with helicopters. On water, being fully amphibious, it is powered by two water jets at a fairly impressive 10 kilometers an hour. You don't want this thing charging through the water like a freaking patrol boat anyway, because it will just drown itself. It doesn't need speed, but the fact that it is amphibious is pretty much a game changer on the battlefields of today. When you have rivers or streams or lakes, then you want to have this thing being able to go just about anywhere. And the no need for bridges is a huge added value to any armored battle group commander. This armored vehicle is fitted with front-mounted self-entrenching blade and can dig itself a defensive position, which is very useful, especially if it's going into an air defense role where it needs to tuck in for the night and dig itself in like a tick to the ground, camouflage itself up and off it goes. The 2S38 does have an associated 9T260 ammunition resupply with the vehicle alongside it when it needs resupplying, which is quite often considering it does have only that 148 rounds carried. It is based on the Ural 4320 or Ural 63704 military truck with the 6x6 configuration and supplies it with ammunition all day long, which again kind of defeats the purpose of having this thing in somewhat of a inconspicuous configuration where it needs to be hidden away, taking out aircraft or any kind of low-flying drones, which is a little peculiar because when you think about a tracked fighting vehicle, you'd expect it to be able to fight on its own for quite some time, especially in a prolonged air defense role. Having trucks drive around with you everywhere really defeats the purpose of having a tracked vehicle being able to go just about anywhere. Now, of course, you can set up these vehicles in supply routes, but if you're putting enough rounds down range on this thing and you've got trucks having to go all over the place with you after firing 148 rounds, which really isn't that many, that's a bit of a problem overall. Now, it does take apparently less than 20 minutes to reload this SPAAG and can reload two of them simultaneously with the trucks, but you don't want to have to keep reloading this thing. It creates vulnerability to the vehicle that's supposed to be defending the battle group and creates vulnerability to the trucks following it around. I have to say I'm really impressed with the capability of the rounds that this thing can use, but if it can't prolong fire, what's the point? 
if you have a whole fleet of halos or UAVs coming in, which apparently today is the more modern style use of UAVs, instead of a couple here and there, it's almost like a flock of drones, you want this thing to just keep going all day long. Now, 57 millimeters of explosive round is enough to take out an aircraft single-handedly. No doubt about that. So we're not looking at the sort of US doctrine of, you know, manual fire dummy round capabilities where the Vulcan cannon is just spraying the sky with with rounds 30 millimeter that's really not what this vehicle is going with it's more sort of precise pinpoint programmable ammunition that can engage aircraft with one or two rounds this isn't a spray and pray gun system it's something that needs to be used on a more accurate basis and that's kind of cool i kind of like it. it's unique uh, we don't see that very often you know with anti-aircraft platforms of today you know you look at the orca loin and all the other sort of you know twin barrel beasts that just light up the sky the tunguska you know the Gepard, all these vehicles that just really are spray and pray. This one goes a little bit differently, which is really answering my question that I mentioned earlier. What is different about this vehicle? Well, it's stepping away from mass amounts of ammunition being carried around, huge amounts of firepower going into the sky or into the ground, and more on the specific pinpoint accuracy of one round and one projectile being programmed to engage an aircraft at a certain height, distance, trajectory, and flight path, which is fairly cool and unique and i'm kind of impressed i would love to learn more about this vehicle but it's really difficult to get more specific instances and examples of it because it's fairly new i mean this vehicle has only really truly been put into its conceptual basis as of this year but i'm excited to learn more about it and see more about it in the future thank you everyone for joining me on today's video i hope you learned something about this beautiful vehicle the 2s38 self-propelled anti-aircraft gun if you did enjoy, please leave me a like, and if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified next time. I'd like to personally thank everyone who has been supporting my Patreon page, my uh, subscription base or membership base of this channel, and those who have been also supporting my PayPal. It really does mean a lot, and I'm really, really proud to have such a fantastic community who's willing to support me on that front. So thank you from every ounce of my heart. It really does mean a lot. Stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you on the next video. All the best. Bye-bye.